Hello and good day. For today, our topic is Nature and Effect of Obligations. Since this topic in Law on Obligations and Contracts is too long, hahatiin natin to into different parts. So for today, ang i-discuss ko ay Part 1 ng Nature and Effect of Obligations. First, kailangan nyo munang malaman kung ano ba ang pinagkaiba ng determinate thing at generic thing. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng determinate thing at generic thing? Unahin natin yung determinate thing. A thing is determinate when it is particularly designated or physically segregated from all others of the same class. This is Article 1460 of the New Civil Code of the Philippines. In other words, kapag sinabing determinate thing, this is the specific thing. Kasi kapag yung thing ay specific, we can particularly designate or physically segregate it from all others of the same class. In order for you to understand this better, let me give you examples. First, 2020 Toyota Fortuner with engine number 234567, body number 123456, and plate number URV123. Kahit tanggalin natin yung engine number dyan at body number dyan, kahit ang matira lang ay 2020 Toyota Fortuner with plate number URV123, masasabi mo na itong thing na ito ay determined. Why? Kasi di ba sa isang sasakyan merong isang plate number. Kada sasakyan merong unique na plate number. At dahil merong unique na plate number itong 2020 Toyota Fortuner, this is an example of determinate thing. Next, my only wristwatch. Take note of the word only. That means nag-iisang wristwatch. At kung nag-iisang wristwatch yan, that means determinate a thing. Next, the house located at 123 Moret Street, Sampaloc, Manila. This is also an example of a determinate thing. Why? Diba? Isang housing number kada isang bahay. Next, my horse named Black Stallion. This is also an example of determinate thing kasi nga merong pangalan yung horse. On the other hand, kapag sinabi namang generic thing, a thing is indeterminate or generic when it is not particularly designated or physically segregated from all others of the same class. That means ito yung kabaliktaran ng Determinate thing. Kung yung determinate thing ay particularly designated or physically segregated from all others of the same class, itong generic thing naman ay not particularly designated or physically segregated from all others of the same class. In other words, this thing is one of a class. Hindi siya a specific thing. Examples of generic thing are horse, a car, and 10,000 pesos. Ang unang example ay a horse. Of course, this is not particularly designated or physically segregated from all others of the same class kasi nga ang dami-daming kabayo. 
Next, a car. This is also a generic thing kasi nga ang dami-daming kotse. Hindi natin masegregate. We cannot particularly designate or physically segregate this car from all others of the same class. And 10,000 pesos. Of course, yung 10,000 pesos ay generic thing kasi hindi natin masabi kung ilan ba yan. 10,000 ba na piso? 10 na isang libo? 20 na 500? Or 100 na 100 pesos? Let us try to classify the following whether they are determinate thing or generic thing. Always remember na kapag sinabing determinate thing, ito yung specific. At kapag sinabi namang generic thing, ito yung one of a class. Let's start with number one, this particular book in my table. This particular book in my table is a determinate thing. Why? Kasi wala akong ibang tinutukoy na particular book kundi yung particular book na nasa table ko. Ang tinuturo ko dito na book ay yung book na nasa table ko. Wala akong ibang tinutukoy na libro. That's why this particular book in my table is a determinate thing. How about number two? Five books. Is this a determinate thing or a generic thing? Of course, ito ay generic thing. Kasi nga, hindi natin masegregate. We cannot particularly designate or physically segregate these five books from all other books. Take note, kahit sinabi dyan na five books in accounting or kahit ang sinabi dyan ay five books in algebra, is still generic thing pa rin. Next, the sum of 15,000 pesos. Katulad lang to nung ating example kanina, 10,000 pesos. Therefore, this is considered as generic thing. Next, the car of X with the plate number XYZ123. Katulad lang to nung ating example kanina. Therefore, this is considered as determinate thing. Why? Because there is a unique plate number per car. For every car, there is a unique plate number. Next, the only laptop of Y. Of course, isang laptop lang yan. Kaya... Ito ay determinate a thing. Next, one of the houses of X and Y. Ang sabi dito, one of the houses. Ibig sabihin, maraming bahay. Si X at si Y. Ang tinutukoy dito ay yung isa sa mga bahay ni X at Y. Although ang sinabi dito ay one of the houses of X and Y, hindi naman in-specify kung alin sa mga bahay na ito yung tinutukoy. Hindi natin alam kung ano yung tinutukoy na bahay dito. We cannot specify that house. Therefore, this is classified as generic thing. Let us now proceed to the importance of knowing whether a thing is determinate or generic. Bakit pa natin kailangang alamin kung ang thing ay generic or determinate? 
Bakit pa natin kailangang i-classify yung thing whether it is a determinate thing or generic thing? As a rule, the loss of a determinate thing through a fortuitous event extinguishes the obligation. This is Article 1262 of the New Civil Code of the Philippines. Ang ibig sabihin lang nito, ang general rule kapag yung determinate thing ay nawala o nasira through a fortuitous event, ang obligation ni debtor kay creditor ay matatapos na. That means wala ng obligation si debtor kay creditor. Take note na ang tinutukoy dito ay determinate thing. Hindi tinutukoy dito yung generic thing. Kasi kahit na mawala o masira yung generic thing through a fortuitous event, meron pa ring obligation si debtor kay creditor. Hindi pa rin matatapos ang kanyang obligation. And this is the importance of knowing whether a thing is determinate or generic. Again, as a general rule, the loss of a determinate thing through a fortuitous event extinguishes the obligation. But the loss of a generic thing through a fortuitous event does not extinguish the obligation. Ang tanong, bakit kapag yung determinate thing ay nawala o nasira through a fortuitous event, hindi matatapos ang obligation ni debtor kay creditor? Hindi ma-extinguish yung obligation ni debtor kay creditor? This rule is based on the principle that the genus of a thing can never perish. As I said earlier, di ba, ang generic thing, it is one of a class. And because it is one of a class, it can never perish. For example, Ang obligation ko sa iyo ay magbigay ng ballpen. Ang ballpen ay generic thing. Now, through a fortuitous event, nasira o nawala yung ballpen. Kahit nawala o nasira yung ballpen through a fortuitous event, hindi pa rin matatapos yung obligation ko sa iyo na magbigay ng ballpen. Kasi nga, marami pang ballpen na available dyan. That is why the genus of a thing can never perish. Ang gagawin ko, bibili ako ng panibagong ballpen at yun yung ibibigay ko sa iyo. Another example, kung ang obligation ko ay magbigay ng 10,000 pesos, at through a fortuitous event, nawala yung 10,000 pesos o nasira yung 10,000 pesos, yung obligation ko na magbigay sa iyo ng 10,000 pesos, hindi pa yan matatapos. That means, meron pa rin akong obligation na magbigay sa iyo ng 10,000 pesos. Kasi nga, yung 10,000 pesos ay generic thing. Kahit mawala or nawala yung 10,000 pesos through a fortuitous event, makakahanap ka pa rin ng 10,000 pesos. That is why the loss of a generic thing through a fortuitous event does not extinguish the obligation. Because this rule is based on the principle that the genus of a thing can never perish. Ito na yung importance kung bakit kailangan nating i-classify yung thing whether it is a determinate thing or generic thing. Kasi 
Sa determinate thing, kapag nawala yan o nasira through a fortuitous event, matatapos ang obligation ni debtor kay creditor. Pero sa generic thing, kapag nawala yan o nasira through a fortuitous event, meron pa ring obligation si debtor kay creditor. Kanina pa natin binabanggit yung term na fortuitous event. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng term na fortuitous event? Kapag sinabing fortuitous event, this is any event which cannot be foreseen or which, though foreseen, is inevitable. In other words, ito yung event na kung saan imposible na ma-foresee or ma-avoid. Take note, it is not enough that the event should not have been foreseen or anticipated, but it must be one impossible to foresee or avoid. Take note of the phrase impossible to foresee or avoid. Kasi hindi enough na mahirap i-foresee or i-predict yung event dapat impossible to foresee or avoid. A uh, fortuitous event may either be acts of God or acts of man. Sa acts of God, ang tinutukoy dito ay yung natural calamities or occurrences. Gaya ng earthquake, typhoon, lightning, at flood. Sa acts of God naman, of course, merong intervention ang mga tao dito. Gaya ng war, armed robbery, at riots. Yan yung mga example ng acts of men. Again, a fortuitous event may either be acts of God or acts of men. Recall that as a general rule, the loss of a determinate thing through a fortuitous event extinguishes the obligation. So therefore, we can say na kapag yung determinate thing ay nawala o nasira, through acts of God or acts of man, gaya ng earthquake, typhoon, war, robbery, etc., wala ng obligation si debtor kay creditor. Extinguish na yung obligation ni debtor kay creditor. And of course, do not forget na kapag Yung generic thing ay nawala o nasira through a fortuitous event, hindi extinguished ang obligation. That means, tuloy pa rin ang obligation ni debtor kay creditor. The following are the elements of fortuitous event. The elements of a fortuitous event are first, the cause must be independent of the debtor's will. That means, yung cause kung bakit nangyari, yung fortuitous event ay independent sa will ni debtor. That means, walang kinalaman ang debtor sa cause ng fortuitous event. Next, there must be impossibility of foreseeing the event or of avoiding it even if it can be foreseen. Sabi ko nga kanina, it is not enough na mahirap i-foresee or i-predict yung fortuitous event. Dapat impossible na ma-foresee yung event or impossible na ma-avoid yung event. And last, the occurrence of the event must be of such character 
as to render it impossible for the debtor to perform his obligation in a normal manner. For example, ang obligation ko is to give my only wristwatch. My only wristwatch is a determinate thing. Kung yung only wristwatch ko ay nawala because of flood, natangay ng tubig, that means hindi ko na siya mahanap pa kasi nga natangay na yun ng tubig. Kung natangay na yun ng tubig at hindi ko na siya mahanap, therefore it is impossible for me to perform my obligation to give my only wristwatch to you. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng letter C. The occurrence of the event must be of such character as to render it impossible for the debtor to perform his obligation in a normal manner.